Let me tell y'all a story, okay? One time I was hanging out with this fam, right? And she told me to come over, right? And I, we just barely getting to know each other. Like, first off, <laughs> I pulled up to her house and I really felt like she thought she was going to get something from me or something. Because, like, first off, um, why did you change from your civilian clothes to these short ass booty shorts and a bra? Like, you were wearing pants and a shirt. And then she, like, switched like Superman. <laughs> switched her whole outfit, like, everything. And then, like, I was trying to watch the movie, Michael Myers, and what did she do? Bro, she kept hopping on top of me, and I told her to stop. Like, I literally told her to get off me. She got so offended. She's like, why? Well, you don't like it? No, I didn't come here for that. I really came here to buy bitch. What the fuck? And then it just got more sloppier. She kept getting on top of me, kept trying to get me to kiss her, bro. I'm trying to watch this fucking movie that I've never seen, ever. Oh, my God. I will never do that again. I'm never hanging out with y'all fans by yourself in your house. Bro, no means no. Okay, I felt like I was getting taken advantage of. Never again. <laughs> that was wow. So I like I giggled at the beginning because I've done this. Somebody said they were coming over and I put on my cutest outfit. Like I had just bought it and it wasn't like booty shorts. It was like this one one piece. Like you know back in the day where they had the like the long sleeves with the shorts. It was one of those that I just bought and I was so hyped. But to my account, they said that that's what was happening. So when they came over and I was looking good as freak. And I made her nervous, bro. I made her so nervous because I looked too good. And she just was like, oh, okay, well, I got to go. You just drove an hour and a half. No, hour and a half for two hours to come see me. Been here for 10 minutes. Now you ready to go? After you told me what was up, it was up when you was coming. So I was just like, ah. So, yeah, I understand that when you're just trying to chill. And they just like, I want it so badly. It's like, bro, I get off me. <laughs> women can say no to women, okay? <laughs> All right, it's another lesbian dating chronicle story. Bro, I felt that whole exhale. <laughs> I feel you, friend. What you got to say? Let's hear it. Story time, and I'm going to try to make this quick. And I've been I've recorded this video about five times now, and I just can't get it out fast enough. Like, it's so much nonsense that goes along with this. So, anyway, I did the most lesbian thing that you could, that lesbians could do. Um, other than, you know, I moved somebody into my house that I barely knew. And, and then I ended up buying them a car because they couldn't keep driving my car because it was basketball season. So, um. <laughs> Tell me I'm invested. My tags are have to be renewed every February. My birthday is the 1st of February, so they have to be done before the, the 1st. Um, I had hit her up and was like, hey, you know, and like mid-February because I forgot and I was like hey you got to get the emissions test done because it's time to renew the tags or whatever and I got to go online and pay for it and she's like oh my car's the car's in the shop like um that'll be you know when they finish I'll have them do the emissions test or whatever I'm like okay cool whatever so she kicks me back. She says, she, I got the emissions test. I'm like, cool. So I pay for the tags and the tags come. And she's like, I'm like, the tags are here. She's like, okay, cool. Can you put them in the mailbox? I'm like, yeah, okay, cool. Put them in the mailbox. This was three days ago. They've been in the mailbox for three days. So she's like, I'm going to come before I go to work in the morning, early in the morning, around six. Okay, whatever. It's still out there. Tuesday, I'm going to come after work on Tuesday. They're still there. So then yesterday, my brother brought the mail in and he accidentally brought that in. And I was like, no, that needs to go back outside. She needs to come pick it up to put the tags on the car. So he takes it back outside, puts it back out there. And so then I get a message this morning from her saying, hey, you know, I came by this morning. It was nothing in the mailbox. Um, can you please take a picture of it and let me know what it looks like? Because it was nothing in there. And I'm like, and that, that can't be right. Like, let me go check. Now my mailbox is black. So if you put a white piece of paper in there, you're going to be able to sell there's something white in the black mailbox. Like, it's offsetting. You know what I'm saying? So I go, up, I go out there and I open the mailbox. And lo and behold, this is the door to the mailbox. Like, for instance, closed. The, the piece of mail is right here. You open it up. There's the mail. Close it. Okay, so I'm like, there's no way she didn't see this. Like, she must be blind or something. Like, it's literally right there. And even if you felt your hand in there, it was right in the front. So you can't, she just sent me another message that said, oh, I put my hand in there, felt around, and I didn't feel anything. There's no way you didn't feel that piece of paper. Unless you had no feelings in your fingers. You are lying. So what 
idea was. I said, something is up. My spidey senses, senses started kicking up. I said, she's not in the state of Georgia. She sent somebody else over here to pick that up. And they didn't, they got lost and couldn't find my house because my house is back off the street and it's kind of hard to miss you. You trust me, it's hard. People have a hard time finding it all the time. So I'm like, she's not in the state of Georgia. That is why she couldn't find it. She sent somebody else over here. So of course I, I'm like, let me, I get on, I start Googling. I find a, a place $4.99 to do a background check. Okay. Let me find out where this chick is because she's not in Georgia. And lo and behold, it pops up another address in another state. And I said, ah. Okay. Oh, yeah. So you decided to move out of state and take a car that does not belong to you. I don't care if you're making payments on it. You can make 100 payments on it. The shit is in my name. So you should have not left the state with my car without telling me that that's what you were thinking about doing, wanting to do, working out something with me. Because if something happens, that car is still in my name. If you decide not to pay and just drop that bitch off somewhere and go get, it's still, I, how am I going to get to it in, in another state? And I'm not, I don't want to just speak that into, into happening, yeah. but People are shady and people do shady things. I would like to believe that they're a good person, but at the end of the day, it's a liability on me that you're putting me in. And then you try to play me like I'm stupid, like like I'm not smart enough to figure stuff out because a lot of I I let a lot of stuff go like this. I pretend that I don't know. I pretend that I don't see it. I pretend that I don't hear it. I pretend that I don't get that gut feeling. That something ain't right. And I keep in mind, it's like, you know what, what up? Because I let a lot of stuff slide with her. A lot of stuff slide. That I didn't confront her on. Like, before she got this car, driving around in my car, flexing like it's hers, taking girls out on dates and whatnot. While you living in my house. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. But yeah, I just wanted to like, share that story um i tried to make it short and i apologize for being so long but lesbians y'all be careful out there in these mm -hmm. in these lesbian streets there's some like some grimy slimy shady people out there and i just need y'all to do better and that's a that's like the 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 <laughs> that's the cliff notes version of this particular story because yeah Y'all be y'all be safe out there. Thank you for sharing, friend. But I need you to do better. Cause what are we doing? I'm so confused. You missed out so many, many points there where I just missed or went over my head or I just didn't hear because I didn't want to hear. You know, I got them ears, honey. I got them ears. That's why they cover up because I got them ears. So are y'all broken up? Cause I'm confused. If y'all broke up, why she still got your car? If like, or if y'all together, like, why y'all still together? If she was flexing in your car and going on dates with other, like, did y'all have an open relationship? I'm just so confused, cause why does she got your car and she in another state? Like, I'm over here thinking that y'all live together, and you're like, hey, yeah, it's in the mailbox. Get it, get it in the mailbox when you come on, and put it on the car, and then come into the house. Like, I get that, so I'm just confused when she says it's in the mailbox. Can you put it in the mailbox? It's just like if you live here. What we doing? And then when she was like, okay, when I got past that, well, maybe they don't live there. They had moved out, but still in the relationship with each other. It made sense. And then it was just like, but it's been two days. Like, I'm just confused because me, and if it's my car, because first of all, I would not do that. Like, where are you? Where you at? Hit me up, boo. Come buy me a car. Like, what we doing? Buy me a car. Make my payments, honey. Yes. Need me a sugar mama. Hit me up. Buy me. Somebody watching. Go Go shoot my shot for me. Go shoot my shot for me. Slide up into her DMs for me and be like, hey, you need to wash up because she wants you, boo. Because she fine, fine, honey. She look like she can be with me. <laughs> she look like she can be with me. That's hilarious. But my thing is, ooh, help me help you. Because it's not, it's not mathing. It's not mathing at all. Ain't no way that I'm going to buy a woman a car if we're not married. If we're not married or she's not my baby mama. 
I'm not buying her no car. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. It's not going to be in my name. If I buy you something, even if we marry you, my baby mama, it is now in your name. Because I am not going to deal with that. Like, oh, I got to hunt you down, do this and that for that. Like, no, I'm not going to do that. So I just have not gotten over the fact that I don't know if they're together or not. Because that sounds crazy. And the fact that you're going to get somebody to come to my house to do what you need to do for me, I don't like that either. How you going to just invite somebody to my house? Tell them, oh, go pick that up for me. That sounds wild. That sounds ridiculous. To me. Ain't no way. Just, what? Bonkers. Bonkers. I just, all the way, like, <laughs> I need you to get it together, friend. Don't do that again. I hope you learned from that. Because these people will play your face, honey, and not give a crap. They only do what you allow them to do. And you allow her to do a lot of stuff now. From what you said, you allow her to do a lot of stuff. And it's bothering me. But if it ain't bother you, I shouldn't be bothered. I'm learning that. So let me not be bothered. Let's keep it moving. Update on my dating life. I met this guy about three weeks to a month ago. He's just my type. Masculine, tall, and affectionate. We met one night on one of my solo nights on the town. I'm not going to go into the meeting process, but let's just call him D. He stands about six foot, loves underground music, and his birthday is May 28th. I don't know much about signs, but please let me know if I should run. We went about three times now. I thought I was looking for affection until he held my hand, and I was more scared than anything. And I think it's because me growing up in church made me even more paranoid. And growing up in the Bahamas was the icing on the cake. At this time, my hands are sweating and I'm just waiting on one person to burst in my hair with a Guinness bottle. Shouting out, you like mine. After a few minutes of adjusting, I just want to say it felt good to really date freely. And I love the fact that through our conversation, he keeps stopping to tell me how handsome I am. Flattery gets you everywhere. Yes, and it was my first time ever showing any affection in public. And for the other two dates, he had to hold my hand. Second date was to the movies, and we watched Avatar, and it went well. Third date, we went to dinner, and we got to really see each other's style. Well, for me, I try to look presentable every time I went out, but I get to see his style. So we went to this nice little restaurant, and Daddy had swag. He looking good, smelling good. It's a movie. So we went to this cute little restaurant, and he pulled out the chair. Side note, he made the initiative and he picked the restaurant, the time, and the date. Just so you know. So it was quite refreshing to just have to show up. After dinner, he got the chair and that was a wrap. Oh, by the way, just in case you girlies want to know, he have no problem with the nails. So with that being said, it's going great. We love a partner who's a boss and made the plans. Oh, I love a boss, bro. Made the plans, honey. And it can dress like if y'all have not seen my first date video you should probably check it out because that's one of the things i've been talking about flattering how you dress makes a big difference compliments make a big difference swag confidence all that makes a big difference so i i freaks with that i freaks with that next The fact that I've made a video uh, that's pretty similar to this one uh, previously is quite laughable actually and sad. So yesterday I went to um, my regular watering hole, if that's what you call it, and I was expecting to meet somebody there off of a dating app. I know I should just burn those. Um, and they literally texted me saying, on my way, and I said what I was wearing, where it was situated in the bar. And they said, sounds good. And I heard that message. And then 10, 15 minutes go by. Just wanted to make sure, like, everything was still okay. Go back to the messaging. Unmatched. Why? <laughs> just, I don't have no words anymore. It's just funny. Ciao. I don't understand like why why even be a catfish why not show up 
you know i'm saying why not show up why be a catfish why waste anybody's time this is why i don't meet people and i don't go on dates and they be swearing up and down that i'm a catfish no i don't have time for you to waste my time like i don't have time for you to waste like there's none there like let's look for it let's look for the time i don't have it for you to waste my freaking time so i'm not about to show up anywhere if i'm not gonna be there already if it's not already in my plans to do this like that's how i make dates if i'm going somewhere and i'm already gonna go that place then yeah meet me there meet me somewhere where i'm already already going because it's not a waste of my time i was already going there and if you happen to show up you just happen to show up there it could be a treat or it can be not good <laughs> but i'm there i didn't waste my time because i was already going there so i just don't understand when people are just not showing up like i can be late i'll be late all day but i'm gonna show up and when i show up it's gonna be a good time so i don't you know i i just don't i don't condone that like no don't waste nobody's time like that's why i be up front with my intentions with what i'm going what i got going on like i tell a person all day i'll text you all day i'll facetime you all day but when it comes to phone calls i'm not i'm not doing that i'm just not going to do that but i'm just gonna be honest with you i facetime with you all day literally we can facetime all day i used to date this girl and that's all she wanted to do was facetime completely fine because i worked at the post office i could be on the phone all day i don't give a crap with the job i have now i can be on the phone all day i don't give a crap i got a charger i got plenty of data like we work and we got unlimited so we can do this all day fine but i'm not about to text you all day like i'll text you but i'm not gonna text you all day i'll be on the phone i'm not about to be on the phone all day you call me okay hi the moment it gets quiet i'm gonna hang up <laughs> like, you know, i'm not scared to be like okay this conversation is going to where i'm gonna hang up on facetime it's cool i can look at your face it's fine we can sit in silence looking at each other's faces that's fine but on the phone just hearing you breathe or you talk to everybody in the background it's not cool it's not i'm not doing that so yeah <laughs> you know how black people be they get on the phone and talk to everybody in the background like what is going on your attention is right here hud right here subscribe